Practically every major building within the city limits of Stowe served some other purpose at some other time in history. The building I knew as Workman High School, the one that serviced primarily 9th and 10th grade students, was at one time Stowe High School, the only 9th 12th grade game in town. As Stowe's population grew, the original building became hopelessly outgunned by the incoming student bodies. As many of us Stowe Billies fondly remember, the city's solution to the problem was to find the best and the brightest architects it could afford. And these skilled men would come up with a solid plan to double the capacity of Stowe High School. This scheme would have worked too if it hadn't been for those meddling measurements. The new addition was precisely one half floor higher than the original building. Sorry about that, Chief. Missed it by that much. The marriage between old and new sections of workmen was finally achieved with a long, sloping ramp down the middle of a connecting hallway. Few of us missed any opportunity to slide or roll something down that ramp back in the day. The new section also had an elevator, although permission to use said elevator was limited to handicapped students or those who were temporarily out of commission. The rest of us had to choreograph an intricate ballet involving ramps, stairwells, hallways, and more hallways. Workman's floor plan was dictated by the educational philosophy championed by Dr. Benjamin Skinner, a leading specialist in draconian teaching methods at the time. Dr. Skinner believed all a student really needed to learn was a desk and a teacher. Like rats in a maze, each student would eventually figure out the optimum way to travel from classroom to classroom. The reward for all of this behavioral conditioning was a quality education with minimal distractions. I would have preferred a lump of cheese myself. The original part of Workman still featured steam-fed radiators for heat and open windows for non-heat. There was no air conditioning for the comfort of the rat students or their rat instructors. Dr. Skinner would have loved what they did with the place. During the colder months, the steam heat would flow through the cold metal pipes, causing them to expand and contract. This expansion and contraction triggered a series of loud bangs that could be heard throughout the building. It became our two-minute warning that heat was finally on the way, one hallway at a time. The new part of Workman also had steam heat, but the architects were clever enough to hide the pipes under more modern covers. We could actually twist knobs that looked like they would have some effect on something. They didn't. Welcome to Ramp World. One hallway in the original section led to the typing room, where many of us learned how to type on manual typewriters. The instructor would put on a record, and a man who sounded suspiciously like the narrator of every school film strip ever would call out letters to type. As we tapped our way through the ASDF, J of assignment over and over again, we had plenty of time to plenty of time to think of the things we'd rather be doing, like not typing endless lines of as Steve Keel. I always thought a sentence like, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy would be more interesting, just to see the look on the janitor's face when he emptied out trash cans from The Shining. Our typing teacher at Workman did find ways to break up the home row monotony, especially on Friday mornings. She allowed students to bring in their own albums while the rest of us sawed away at assignments printed in a workbook. I'm not sure if she was aware of the artistic leanings of the modern music scene at the time, but she wanted to be hip to the jive and we weren't about to stop her. Because we were so isolated from the rest of the building, volume was not an issue. So those of us who took certain typing courses under a certain typing slash English teacher during the early 80s all learned to type while listening to ACDC's heavy metal album Back in Black. To this day, I can still hear the clacking of typewriter keys timed to the beat of the title song, or You Shook Me All Night Long, 